Waju. Recommendations you can trust. Oh, that's a big bite, Heidi. Ah, I know, but I'm kind of known for that. <laughs> Textural overload. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Welcome to another edition of Beyond the Plate, a series highlighting our city's favorite chefs and their unique stories, brought to you by Waju. Today, we follow Chef Sean Murray Smith of Mile End's beloved restaurant, Il Flottant. We will spend a day in the life and find out where chefs like to go when they're not working. Where do they eat? Where do they want to get coffee? Where do they hang? Then, it was off to the Jantella market where we gathered beautiful produce and headed back to his kitchen here at Il Flottante where we created a beautiful masterpiece. Stay with me, this episode is going to be scrumptious. So on my day off, I like to go and uh, see my friend Eric, uh, the owner of Boxerman's. A uh, wonderful restaurant that I actually had the pleasure of opening with him since about five years ago. And uh, we like to just kind of have a coffee and sit, talk about our week. What does it take to be a great chef? Uh, you have to be a really good dishwasher. But more so, it's like the organization. And uh, honestly, like uh, at least 75% of my job is morale making sure they're taken care of. A chef doesn't necessarily have to be artistic or anything like that. I think they just need to understand that food needs to be delicious and like add a bit at the base, you know, and then everything else can come after. But yeah, I think the dishwashing is like where it starts because <laughs> it's, it's the basis of everything else. Um, if your pit's dirty and unorganized, then, you, you know, your food probably will be too. Um, so, yeah, I think a, a, a great chef is a really excellent dishwasher. Another thing I like to do my day off is go to Jean Market, where I've come to know a lot of the providers and people there. And I like to just go see what ingredients are poking around, because, you know, sometimes something could just come up and, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks it's gone, and I like to take advantage of that. And yeah, just kind of get to know my providers better, and it's just such a beautiful place to be on a, on a sunny day. Your artistry is what knocks me off of my feet when I watch you in the kitchen. And I need to understand what your kitchen trajectory looked like. Are you classically trained? Did you go to school? Can you tell me a little <clears throat> bit about your artistry? I mean, I think I've always been an artist. My mother saw that from a young age and she actually got me an art teacher. I ended up being not the best in school and just pretty much drawing on every math test I ever had. Eventually just dropped out of high school. I ended up working for my friend of the family's uh, restaurant. Just started doing dishes and then I got to start doing salads and desserts and just putting things on plates basically. Anthony Bourdain was someone who was really like a role model and just made me like think it was cool enough. So I ended up going to Kingston, Ontario and uh, enrolling in Liaison College, uh, School of Culinary Arts. Someone who was bad in school just ended up excelling, finally, for the first time in my life and uh, had a really good role model, two really good role models, Steph, Steph George and uh, Paul Pisa. And then it was really only once I came here at uh, Les Saint de Montavie that uh, the only thing I asked for when I took the job was some creative freedom. I think, yeah, just artistically, I can't even really explain it myself. I like to just kind of take my experience and bring it to the table and have somebody else experience it. Long story short. Beautiful. I also, while I'm at the market, like to stop by Butchery Capital and see my boy Jude, who is just a wonderful butcher and a wonderful person. And, uh, you know, we'll have a coffee because on my day off, I need at least several. And, uh, you know, talk about each other's weeks and days. And yeah, just a, a lovely place, lovely people. Last night, we ate at Salle Climatisé. Well, 
The beauty of last night was that it showed me the camaraderie and love that exists in our fair city amongst the industry and that you found your surrogate family and it was extremely special to see. Uh, I think honestly, the more people involved and the more we kind of not compete with each other, but show each other love and appreciation, the better we're gonna be. When I was younger and coming up, I didn't feel I had a community around me yet. No one was really coming by and I had a hard time understanding why. And I just felt like there was this thing, a stigma over my restaurant. And finally, now, after years of hard work, if someone's telling you you're doing a good job, like that's kind of keeps you motivated to keep doing a good job. And it's like, it's a pleasure to show these, these guys at Sakya Mitizé or and the Boxermans or whoever, all these restaurants that I love, um, my support. And I have beautiful people around me. And that's like the most important thing. Chef, we just came from the market. Tell me, what are we making today? We are making our chocolate forest tart that we have on the menu right now. And uh, yeah, let me just get to that. Yeah, let the artist get to his work. It's a chocolate salted ganache. And we're just going to fill the base of the tart. Next, we take some chocolate brittle that we have a little caramel in. Pecan brittle, that's with some zephyr chocolate. So here we have a uh, dolce leche balsam for custard. So we just caramelize this down so it burns faster. Next, we'll let it cool a little bit. And we will add our gel of pine, balsam fir, and spruce, and uh, quince. Yeah. So now, this is a meringue of mint, spruce, and balsam fir. So imagine doing this like eight at a time, and then just nonstop it keeps going. <laughs> Chef, describe to me a typical night here at Il Flottante. I don't think I could describe a typical night here at Il Flottante because uh, every day is a different day and there's always new ingredients and there's something changing and when you want to do something you're so passionate about and you love, it takes a lot out of you and it takes out a lot of my staff and, uh, but we're here and we're ready. So if you'd like to come in and sit down, I just ask that you enjoy yourself and just, yeah, have like, the best time you possibly can because that's kind of what it's all about. Here we have a powder of mint, balsam fir, verbena, a little lemon balm, and we're just creating kind of like a mossy sort of scenery here. Here we have some elderflower, which is in season right now. What does it mean to you to have a tasting menu? Uh, creative freedom. Honestly, to just be able to do what I want to do. So there's nothing like kind of holding me down other than trying to meet everybody's dietary needs. It's not something that used to be important to me until if you only have two vegetarian dishes on the menu and maybe those dishes, they don't feel like a meal. And uh, that's kind of why I went towards tasting menus because of that creative expression, but also to try to please everybody. Uh, we do a full vegan menu. So if you come here and you're vegan, you're vegetarian, you're a pescatarian, we got you for that. There's no menu. And you have to either go in blind and trust me, or you can ask our lovely service staff who know every single detail of this menu. And it kind of keeps things sort of like mysterious and fun, I'd like to say. Okay, so here we have ice cream of uh, hemlock and mint. And it's just to kind of mellow out the, uh, all the sweetness going on here. And there you have it. The only thing missing is me eating it. And a spoon, yes. And a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Wild, like the ingredients. Mm. Layered and complex, like the chef. <laughs> this is a dream. Thank you. Thank you. That's crazy. <laughs>